So class, in this experiment, you'll be performing a titration. And in order to do a proper titration, you need to get familiar with this type of glassware. It's known as a burette. So it's a long, elongated tube of glass. And there's a little spigot here that you can turn on or off. And while volume will dispense. So you hold this, and you're going to get this clamp. Hold the two clamps together, put it in here, and now the barrette um, is set and stable. So work with your partner. Make sure you are all good in how this is arranged. This goes in every one mil increment up to 50 mils. Okay. Two important things about the burette. The first important thing is that it is a very approximate measure. So if you want to put an increment of one mil at a time, you will do that. Or one mil, and then one mil, and then one mil, and then one mil. But it's not exactly one mil. It may be 1.02 mils, or maybe 0.98 mils. So we are not looking for exact volumes when you work with a burette. So that's why when you do a titration, you can be a little bit fast, not too fast, just a little bit fast when dispensing one mil at a time or 0.5 mils at a time or two mils at a time because we're not looking for accuracy here when using a burette. The second important thing is please, when you read the volumes, read the volume to two decimal places. Just like I hopefully harped on you, to read the volume on a graduate cylinder to one decimal place. Here, a burette, you can read it to two decimal places. So class, in this experiment, you'll be performing a titration. Before we do a titration, you will have to familiarize yourself with this piece of glassware. It is known as a burette. It is sort of an elongated piece of glass which has one mil increments. It goes all the way up to 50 mils. And there's a little spigot here where you can go on, water or liquid comes off and off. Right. Before we start our titration, we'll just take some of our 0.25 molar NaOH. This is going to fill up the burette. This is the, what's called the titrant. Let's just take a little bit of it, okay? Just use a funnel. This is where you're be a little careful with your funnel here. If you noticed, I put several mils, maybe about four to five mils here, and just coating the inner surface, and just coat the surface here. We're going to do that three times, so that was my first one. I'll do this two more times, and once again, just coating the sides of the titrant. In this case, that's going to be 0.25 molar of NaOH. All right. But now that we've cleaned this, let's go ahead and fill the burette up. Now, a good trick is to, for me, I like to fill it all the way up to zero, or in this case, because you have to read it to two decimal places, 0.00. .00. So let's just go ahead and do that here. Okay. So. If you have a very long uh, funnel, you may want to just uh, be careful. I don't let it overflow. All right, I'm just going to go a little bit above zero. All right. I went above zero, and I'm going to look here to see if there's any bubbles. There are no bubbles. Everything looks clear. So I'll just lower this down to about zero mils. So you can always adjust this accordingly. And so this is a little bit over zero mils. So I'm just going to get this down to 0, 0.00. So slowly turn that spigot. there. And take a look at the bottom. You will see that there are no air bubbles or air pockets. I'm at 0, 0.00. My titrant, which contains 0.25 molar NaOH, is ready to go. All right.
So to start off, let us measure about five mils of vinegar. So you can pour it in or you can use this here. I think I'll just pour it in um, just to make things go a little bit more expeditiously. So about five mils. You can read this to one decimal place. So probably I have 4.9 seven or 4.9 uh, 4.9 or 4.8 so you can read this to one decimal place so that's my vinegar I'm going to put that in here okay. so my vinegar is done and adds 50 mils of DI water I already have some DI water here I'll just fill it up to 50 mils careful. That is 50 mils. So 5 mils of vinegar, about 4.9 or 4.8 to one decimal place. This is about 50 mils of water, deionized water. So I've diluted that vinegar. The next thing you want to do in your titration is put your indicator. Okay. And our indicator here is going to be phenol failing. So the phenol failing is our indicator. Just want two drops here. One, two, okay? So you don't have to go overboard on the phenolphthalein. It is sensitive enough. And now I have my vinegar with water. And we're ready to proceed with the titration. Let me just push this a little bit up here. And um, this is where you and your partner are going to have to do some maneuverability. So here I have the volumes facing me, and shake up this tight trend. Remember now, I have 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide, which is a base. In here I have acetic acid, or vinegar, which is an acid. What we're really trying to do here is we're trying to figure out how much of this sodium hydroxide neutralizes 5 mils of this acetic acid. So we're going to add one mil at a time. How do we know when we're done? We know when we're done is when we will have a pink solution. Okay, so that is where the indicator comes in, the two drops of indicator that you've added. Now, if you have something that's too pink, you've overshot. Okay, so every now and then you want to stir this to make sure that the pink is very light, but it still has that pink tinge. So let's begin. All right, I like to just hold it like this. It's at 0, 0.00. Usually we can write this down, 0, 0.00 mils. If you start it anywhere other than 0, 0.00 mils, that will be your initial volume. So let's just go one mil at a time. And like I said before, we don't have to be exact. Okay, that wasn't exactly one mil. It was probably 1.10 mils. And you're going to keep on doing this. Okay? Be patient. Okay, be patient. It's going to take a while. Okay, so one mil at a time. So I kind of overshot it here, but um, reading that, so Let's read now what we have in our burette. The end point was about 19.50, maybe 19.51 mils. So it took 19.51 mils of NaOH to neutralize all of the vinegar. So if you take a look here, okay, so I probably overshot it a little bit. So you got to be careful around 18 mils, 17 mils, and start adding it drop by drop. But this is not bad. It's still a light pink. It's not terribly a dark pink. Uh, but the 19.50 mils shown over here represents my uh, end point. Okay? So that is how much volume um, neutralized the, the um, 
acetic acid in the vinegar. Notice I started at 0.00. .00. Okay, so I started at 0.00. .00. I end at what I believe, don't forget to read it to two decimal places, 19.51 or so mils. So that would represent my endpoint of the titration. Don't forget to subtract five mils from that according to the protocol and you should be able to fill out that data table um, along the way. Now that you've finished your first titration, the second titration involves a pH titration. So first click on Chemistry Labs and in your workstation click pH versus volume and you should be able to get a screen that looks like this. On your y-axis is pH, on your x-axis is volume if you want to change the access labels, your lab manual says your volume should go from 0 to 30. But I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually 0 to 25. So what you're going to do is you're going to go on that 25. You see how the cursor changes. So here it was a plus mark. And now as I go to 25, it's kind of changed into a curvy arrow. Then you want to do a left click and then hit it to 30 mils. Hit enter. Now you have from 0 to 30 mils volume, your pH goes from 0 to 10. All right, here is your pH probe. It's going to be connected to your computer via this uh, GoLink adapter. And it's already stored in electrode solution. So just rotate that cap off. Okay, rotate it off. You don't want these to dry. Now it's up to you if you want to keep that cap on or take it off. But minimize drying time. Always keep this probe wet. There's the electrode. Do a quick DI water wash to make sure it's clean. So this is what I like to do, wash it with some DI water. All right, and then one good swipe with a Kim wipe to make sure it's dry because that probe's been sitting in this electrode solution, right? So you want to make sure it's clean of all of that or removed of all of that salt buffer. All right, so one healthy swipe. And we're going to put it in here. All right, so this is where you're going to get your partner's help. Uh, two people, it would be very good. You may want to clamp it on, uh, but if you're good and maybe lucky, it could just sit right then and there. Okay. So now, your first titration, you used phenolphthalein as an indicator for the endpoint. Your second titration, everything is the same, but you're going to determine your endpoint or your equivalence point using this pH meter. Notice how I dipped that pH meter into the solution of vinegar and water, and my pH has changed, okay? So now we're going to begin putting our titrant, NaOH, into our titrant. Even though this is a pH titration, we will still add the phenolphthalein. Uh, that's just for us. So I'm going to add two drops of the phenolphthalein um, so that we can see uh, the color change. So let's go back to our computer here. What you want to do is you'll see a green collect button. So green collect button. And just let's, that basically tells the computer I'm ready to collect. All right, so let's collect here. And there is our first point, but I haven't added anything yet. So that's okay. Don't worry about that. Now I've added nothing. I'm going to begin to add. Okay. So I'm going to add one mil at a time. Okay. So, all right, make sure you read it to two decimal places. It doesn't have to be exactly 1.00. It could be 0 0.98, 1.02, whatever it is. All right. So here we go. So here is our first one mil, and it's there. So you're probably going to want to get your partner to stir this around. Okay, so make sure you have some good stirring here, and then my electrode came loose, so. But 
want to make sure you can stir and that the titrant gets in there. So how much did I actually add? I added about 1.19 mils. Okay. So I'm going to add that 1.19 mils here. So let's go back to the computer. I just added 1.19 mils. So I'm going to click on the keep button. It asks me for the volume. The volume is 1.19 mils, so I'm going to add it, and I hit enter or click OK, and there's my first point. Now, let's add our second 1 mil, 1.19, right, and now I'm going to add another 1 mil. Okay, so 1.19 was my first one. You may want to get a pencil or paper, or obviously your notebook would be the best one. 1.19, and now I've added a second mil. So 1.19, this one is about 2.12. Okay. So let's go back to keep here. Hit OK or press Enter. And that's my second point. We're going to keep on doing this until we are about five milliliters away from our equivalence point or our end point. So what was our equivalence point or our end point? If you remember, it was 19.50 mils from the first part of the titration. So we're going to keep on doing this one mil at a time. So let's just follow me. Okay, so as you can see here, I completed my pH titration. Here the solution has turned a nice bright pink. Uh, here you can see the curve. Okay, So I kind of messed up a little bit in this regime here. You kind of want this smooth and like that, but I inputted the wrong volumes or something occurred here, but that's okay. The general shape is fine. Uh, maybe these one, two, three, maybe these four or five points or so, the volume got mixed up as I was reading it, or something happened. So you want to be very careful with your titrations. The overall curve should be something like this, a smooth trajectory, and then at high volumes, which imply a high amount of NaOH, you should have this uh, increase in pH. So um, once again, um, it's a pretty good pH titration curve. How will we get the equivalence points here? So that is where you want to use the first derivative so the first derivative, in order to get that, we will click on our pH axis label. Before we do anything else, I just want to mention, when you're done collecting your data, hit stop. So, okay, you never want to hit stop in the middle of collecting data. If you do, by accident, hit stop. Just click append to data. So it's not the end of the world if you hit stop, but just make sure that you click collect again and you append to your pre-existing data set. So we're going to go here to the y-axis and we're going to right click and we're going to click on graph options and under graph options we will check the box that states connect points and click done. So we've connected the points here and now we'll go here right click we will click on right, uh, left click, excuse me, the right, uh, the y-axis label pH, we will click on D1, and that will be your D1 curve. Your equivalence point should be a peak here, so your equivalence point is probably going to be here, 20 mils. This is where I kind of messed up on the graph. And then we will right, uh, left click here and go on D2, and D2 is where it crosses the x-axis. So for that, you want to click on your zero and maybe change your axis to minus 10. And here it crosses the x-axis about here. Okay, so you can actually get an, the um, accurate volume if you click here where it hits the, or where it crosses the x-axis. It's about here. So if you read the volume here, that's about 18.35 mils, okay? So in our first titration, so that's right here, the x-axis is your volume. So 18.35 mils based on 
you are first derivative, left click, okay? The peak here is about 20.41 mils based on the first derivative plot. And when we did the very first titration, we got 19.50 mils. So we can average those values. Um, one thing is, is that when you do your pH titration, okay, you're gonna wanna do this twice, okay? So obviously for me, uh, when I did it, um, I put, I think this point here and this point here, I put in the wrong uh, volumes or something went wrong. So uh, that kind of messed up my first and second derivative curve. So you're gonna do this twice and then average your results. So in total, you'll have three titrations. Make sure you, once you're done, disassemble everything. You can pour it down the sink, wash the sink with some water. Make sure you clean your pH probe. Clean it and do a little uh, swipe with that Kim wipe, that little white uh, tissue, and then put it back into its storage electrode, okay? Because we don't want the pH electrode to get dry. So our final volumetric analysis, we want to figure out how much acetic acid is actually in vinegar. So this is the formula for acetic acid that you found in vinegar. You put five mils of this vinegar. This 19.36 mils came from me averaging the two pH titrations. Okay, so when you do your pH titrations, you average them. So when you do that, or when I did that, I got 19.36 mils. So your values may be a little bit more, a little bit less. Everyone is going to be different. So here's how we'll do this calculation. This 19.36 mils of NaOH neutralized 5 mils of vinegar. So this 19.36 mils neutralized 5 mils of vinegar. Remember, you added 5 mils of vinegar and put it in 50 mils of DI water. This had a molarity of 0.25 molar. Molarity is moles per liter. So 0.25 moles of NaOH in one liter of solution. Okay. And based on this chemical equation, we know that for every one mole of acetic acid, HC2H3O2, we have one mole of NaOH. That's one of our definitions of the mole, coefficients of a balanced chemical equation. Okay? When you do that, okay, this mole of NaOH cancels with this mole. Okay? This mill cancels with this mill. And so when I do this calculation, I get, for my titration, yours may be different, 0.968 molar, so moles per liter. To get the mass percent, I'm going to do 0.968 moles of acetic acid. And molar is moles per liter, so that's actually moles of acetic acid per liter of solution but one liter is actually a thousand mils of solution. Solution. And we know that for every one mole of acetic acid, okay, HC2H3O2, for every one mole, we have about 60.01 grams of, in one mole of acetic acid. HC2H3O2. So the moles of acetic acid cancel with the moles of acetic acid. You're left with grams per mil. We know that for every one mil of solution, it weighs about one gram of solution. So the mils of the solution cancels with the mils of the solution. You're left with grams of acetic acid per grams of solution. So grams of acetic acid is the part, grams of solution is the whole, so part over whole, we multiply that by 100% to get the percentage. 
So in this case, it would be the percentage of acetic acid per solution. Remember, any time you do a percent, the units cancel because it's part over whole, so unit cancels whenever you're doing a percentage. So in this case, if you perform this calculation, you should be able to get the mass percentage of acetic acid, which is HC2H3O2, that's the formula for acetic acid, in the uh, five mils of vinegar that you uh, weighed out. So this value, again, came from averaging your pH titrations. So make sure you do your pH titrations well. Make sure you do them uh, accurately, particularly around the equivalence point. Okay, you don't want to overshoot. And um, that will be your lab. So stay safe. Make sure you wear your lab goggles. Work together with your partner. And have a great lab. Enjoy it.